What's up, everybody? It's uh, Joel Hancock here from Hancock Law Firm in Beaufort. Uh, it's live at five. Got another video for you um, live on Facebook. So um, anyway, while I am waiting for everyone to join in on the fun, and I think y'all can probably see that when we do these live videos, there's people that they're watching from the beginning, um, and then some, some other people show up later, and so I want to give people as uh, much of an opportunity to show up and participate as possible. Uh, as promised, what I wanted to talk about today is um, I want to give you some tips or advice um, on what you can do to increase your chances of getting the best outcome possible if you get a traffic ticket. Now, of course, there's a whole lot of assumptions built into that. And so I want to start from the beginning by saying that this is not a one-size-fits-all for everyone. Obviously, there are going to be situations where you're pulled over and the stakes are going to be very, very high for that encounter. Um, that might be a situation that is not going to apply to most of the people watching this, um, it's going to be very rare that you're driving around with, you know, 10 kilos of cocaine in your, in your trunk. Obviously in that situation, you're going to have a very different, um, I, I would offer you very different advice if you were to give me a call in that scenario. And so I don't want this to be confused as, um, or, or misunderstood, mistaken as a one size fits all kind of solution for everybody in every situation. But the truth is that for most people, um, a majority of the time, your interaction with law enforcement and with police is going to be based on just being stopped for a traffic stop. Um, speeding ticket, maybe your registration is out, your insurance is out, you've been in a wreck, something like that. And so I want to give you some ideas on what you can do if you find yourself in that situation. I'm going to try and sit closer. I think you can hear me better. Um, if you find yourself in that situation, um, what you can do to increase your chances of having a good outcome uh, in that case. So, first of all, um, let me just kind of give everybody, if, you don't, if you're not sure, you never watched any of these before, um, I am a criminal defense attorney in Beaufort, North Carolina. I have been doing this for over five years, and in those five years, I've, I've handled thousands of uh, traffic and criminal cases, um, a huge portion of which have been uh, traffic infractions. And so I have seen literally thousands of speeding tickets, uh, stoplight tickets, excuse me, um, you know, other infractions, accidents, um, where people you know, normal people just going about their day are having interactions with police and law enforcement, state troopers, sheriffs. Um, and I see the notes. I speak with the officers. I speak to the DAs. I speak to the judges. And so I have a good idea of some things that traditionally have worked to ensure that those people are taken care of when they, when their case does come to court. Something to keep in mind for your everyday garden variety, tra garden variety traffic ticket or speeding ticket is that by the time the officer has pulled you over and is up to your window speaking with you, the evidence of the crime that you are about to be charged with has already been gathered. Okay, so that's an, that's an important thing to remember, that he's already clocked you or he's already... Um, you know, he's already seen you run the red light. At this point, really the only thing that the officer is doing is he is finishing up the, um, the final stages of 
you know, issuing, issuing you a citation for the violation that has already occurred. In those situations, I have found that it is always best for people to be polite and cooperative. And here's, um, here's what I mean by that. Don't be like, you know, you'll see some of these YouTube know-it-alls that will film interactions with police where they won't roll down the window and then they don't answer any questions, they don't talk to cops, they, they try to be obstructionist, they try to play around, um, show how tough they are, um, and I want to be perfectly clear about something. Under certain circumstances, that may be warranted especially when the stakes are very, very high. And, and it becomes very necessary for you to assert your rights unequivocally. I'm not talking. I'm not answering questions. I'm not letting you search the car. I'm not doing anything. There may well be a time and place for that. But for the most part, your speeding ticket or your red light ticket or your ticket for failure to yield or just you know your garden var garden variety traffic incident that is not the time to do that that is the time for you to roll down the window speak to the officer answer the questions that he has provide your license provide your registration proof of insurance whatever it is um, answer questions that may be relevant to the infraction that the officer um, has pulled you for, um, take your ticket and be on your way. Okay, that's that's what happens or what ought to happen in that uh, that situation. Now, that said, I I have no problem at all, and I don't think that the officers have any problem at all with you politely asserting that you would not like this investigation or this stop this inquiry to go any farther or to go beyond the scope of the charge that you've been pulled for. And here's what I mean by that. If an officer stops you and um, you know, you're, you're being polite and cooperative, hey, good afternoon, officer, um, what can I help you, or how can I help you, provide the license, provide the registration, answer his questions, and then, and then um, after he's issued the speeding ticket or, or told you, look, I've only stopped you for speeding, I'm going to give you a ticket. If then the, the questioning and other things go beyond just the speeding ticket into, well, do you mind if I, if it, you know, do you mind stepping out of the car and let me search the car? It's perfectly fine at that point to not give additional information or evidence that may lead to further charges, okay? So remember, I'm, I'm talking about something specific here when, when we're talking about the garden variety traffic infraction. That is something that the officer already has the evidence for, and he's just finishing up kind of the formalities of issuing you that citation, like a speeding ticket, like a red light ticket, uh, any other kind of traffic ticket. Be polite. Cooperate with that. It's going to work out for you in the end, and I'll tell you how. If it goes beyond that and into can we search or, or questioning about other potential criminal activity, you can still be polite and say, look, officer, I, I understand um, that you're just trying to do your job, um, and I want to be as polite as possible. And I understand that, um, th that you would like compliance from me, but respectfully, I would like to limit all of my questions or limit all of my answers to the reason that you stopped me. I don't want to talk about anything else in the car. I don't want to talk about anything else that I've got going on. And almost uniformly, um, across this county anyway, that when, when officers are met with that kind of respect and um, you, know, you assert your rights in that way, they will respect that. They, um, you know, they're, they're not going to say that you were rude and uncooperative because you did not, um, you did not allow them to search your car after a speeding ticket stop, okay? Now, I should also say that that scenario is very, very rare as well. Most of the time, you know, well above 90% of the time, an officer stops you for speeding, 
the discussion is going to focus almost entirely around speeding, around identifying you, getting your information, issuing you the ticket, and sending you on your way. It's very rare that it will go beyond that. Sometimes it does. If it does, I think it's okay for you to respectfully decline to answer any other questions about other potential criminal activity. Okay, now let's say that you've got the speeding ticket, you've been polite and cooperative, and the officer puts those two magic words on your traffic citations. You know, I stopped him for going 67 and 55 on Highway 70. Um, he produced his license and was polite and cooperative. All right, now you've got a court date and you've hired an attorney to help you take care of, uh, of this ticket. Well, almost, um, almost without exception, the, the courts, the DA, the judges, uh, your attorneys, and even the officers will show up to court and they will, they will do whatever they can to help give you a break. Um, yeah, you know, especially if it's just your first ticket, um, or if you've got a pretty good, uh, pretty good record, they will do whatever they can to, um, you know, to, to help you with that. Now, if you've decided that you're going to be a YouTube lawyer, and on this speeding ticket, you're not going to roll down your window, you're not going to talk to the officer, you're not going to answer any questions or anything like that, and they and the officer puts, this person was a jerk, they were rude, they didn't cooperate, I was just trying to do my job, and they wouldn't tell me anything, then you're not going to get any help um, in, in court for that ticket. Um, but you can get help if you're polite and cooperative, even if you did exactly what you've been accused of. So it, it, it almost always works out for people to be polite and cooperative. Now, if, um, again, if you're, if you're all bent out of shape about having to answer any questions um, by the police and you decide to be rude and, and, and not talk to them, not roll down your window, um, or, you know, heaven forbid, call names or, or, or anything like that, um, then y y they're not going to try and help you. I mean, it's as simple as that. Um, if, if you're not, if you're not nice, they're not going to do nice things for you. Um, if you are nice, they are going to try and do nice things for you. So it almost always works to your advantage to be polite and cooperative during a traffic stop. Um, and I say that recognizing that things can potentially go too far. Um, and that at some point you have to draw your line with what you're comfortable, um, saying or what you're comfortable revealing to law enforcement. And I think, you know, this is my personal take, I think that it is, um, it's fine to politely assert your rights and say that you would like for the interaction, the encounter with police to stay within the scope of the, um, of the charge that they've stopped you for. And in my experience, the police are okay with that too. The law, law enforcement officers that I've met, that I've talked to over the last five years, where that kind of thing has happened, um, almost uniformly, they're they're like, okay, I, I respect that. You, you don't want me to search your car? I won't. Um, so, you know, do what you can to get those two magic words on your on your ticket if you find yourself on the side of the road uh, with law enforcement blue lights behind you. And um, you know, charged with speeding, traffic ticket, something to that effect. Um, but always be careful. Uh, that's fine. And if you have any questions, you should always consult a lawyer about your specific case. Again, I put those disclaimers at the beginning of these videos. At the end of the videos, I'll put them in the comments as well. That um, every case is different. They're going to depend on a lot of different factors. Um, if you have any questions, if you ever feel like something's going too far, then, um, you know, say, look, I need to, I need to stop. I need to call someone and, uh, you know, someone to call because, uh, you're, you're listening to them right now. Um, but anyway, if y'all have any questions, uh, otherwise about how to, how to behave on, during traffic stops or what you can do to, um, to help your chances of getting a good outcome, even when you may not technically deserve one because you did it. 
Um, but you might deserve one because you were nice. If y'all have any questions, just uh, let me know. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Um, see you next Friday. Thanks, y'all.